a podcast filled with conversation and curiosity sparked by Utica Community Schools. This is UCS Podcademy. Hello, my name is Christine Menglethet. I am a senior at the Jean L. Clyda Utica Academy for International Studies. Welcome to UCS Pod Academy. Today we have with us Mr. Brian Laporte. Welcome, Mr. Laporte. Would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Christine. Thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Brian Laporte. I am the Director of Safety and Management Services for Utica Community Schools. It's just kind of a fancy way of saying that I am the director of safety for the district, and I also am the director of the transportation department for the district. Got it. Well, it's a pleasure having you here with us. Oh, Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. Well, to start off with, um, UCS is a very big school district, right? And I don't know if many people know about how large of a district it is. So could you just speak about how big the district itself is and you know what goes into maintaining such a large district? Absolutely. So uh, our district covers 66 square miles. We have schools at the north end near 26 Mile Road. We have schools at the south end near 16 Mile Road and we cover all that space in between. We have 25 elementary schools in our district. We have seven junior highs, four comprehensive high schools, uh, the International Academy, which you attend, and then we have our Stevenson Made program, our MST program, and our CSI program. So we have a number of different programs covering a lot of different buildings over a large square area of space. Well, considering that this district is so large, how is transportation specifically organized in such a large school district? So we have our transportation department divided into four tiers right now. Um, Our first tier services all of our high schools and our parochial schools. By law, we also have to transport any parochial schools that reside within our district. And then our second tier transports all of our junior high students to any of the schools that they're attending. Our third tier transports our early elementary schools because we have so many elementary schools, we have to break them into two different starting times. So we have an early start and a late start. So our third tier covers all of our early elementary schools and then our fourth tier covers all of our late elementary schools. So we start transporting students around 6.30 in the morning and we finish transporting students by about 9.30 in the morning And then we do the same cycle in reverse in the afternoons. We start taking our high school students home, and then we work our way down to our late elementary schools, and they're usually home by about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Earlier you mentioned about some specialty programs, and I actually attend one myself. So could you speak on, you know, how transportation works for specialty programs? Because I know for myself, um, I have to go through, you know, my home school to reach my actual school I attend. Yep. So we actually transport the pro- different programs in different ways. Um, the school that you attend, the International Academy that you st- attend, we have... Are, we call them hubs. So you get on your normal school bus that outside of wherever you're being picked up in your neighborhood, and you take that to what would be called your home school. So in your case, it would be Stevenson High School. Then once you get to Stevenson High School, you get on a transport, and we take the transport then from Stevenson High School over to the International Baccalaureate Academy and drop you off. For our MST and our CSI programs, we actually have hubs around the district where students will go to that specific hub and then get on a bus at that hub and then get transported directly to their programs that they attend. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. Since there really is no way you can, you know, operate a district so large without a transportation system that UCS uses, um, is there any other way that UCS could do this besides what we have right now? Or is what we have right now the best way we could go about transportation? I would say right now what we have is probably the best way to go about transportation. We're always analyzing our run times and our runs and our specific routes that we're taking to see if there's a way to streamline that and and make those runs faster or to pick up more students and put more students on a particular bus. So for the number of students that we have to transport, the systems that we have in place really are the most effective way to do that as, as we sit here today. Right. So as the director of safety and management services, what are some challenges that you have had to deal with um, throughout your time serving in this position? I would say our number one challenge right now is our shortage of drivers. Um, You know, originally when I was going to school, 
I'm a graduate of Utica Community Schools. When I was going to school, we had our three tier system. So that four tier system that I had talked about, we had squeezed that down to three tiers. Over the last several years, we've lost a lot of drivers in our industry nationwide, right? For a number of different reasons. So our, our number one problem is driver shortage. And because of that, we've had to look at how do we reroute differently with the number of drivers that we currently have. On top of that, you have supply chain issues. So not only do I have to make sure the buses are running on time, it's my job to make sure the buses are actually running. So when we have a breakdown on a bus, we have spares, but we have to order the parts for the bus to get fixed. We have supply chain issues. You know, those are nationwide issues that we we have to deal with, you know, in, in our district as well. So right. um, I would say that those are probably our two biggest issues right now is, okay. is, you know, human capital and then the actual physical capital of the buses. Got it. Well, you mentioned drivers. So um, I was wondering what really goes into being a bus driver and, you know, how important is that role for us students? I would say it's incredibly critical. It's a, it's a very important role for our district and for our students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our drivers are the first people that our kids see at the beginning of their day. And it's right. generally the last person they see in the district at the end of their day. And so those drivers play a really crucial role in the development of our students and making sure our students start their days off on a positive note and end our days at a positive note. Yeah. And if there are issues throughout the day, you know, a lot of our drivers make those connections with students and with families. Our drivers will go out of their way and make phone calls home and say, hey, you know, I noticed you know, Johnny had a rough day today. Is everything OK? Um, parents are very communicative back to our drivers to say, hey, you know, Christine might be having a bad day today. I just need you to keep kind of a special eye on her on the bus. And yeah. our drivers have always been more than willing to step up to the plate and do that. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they play a pretty critical role. Right. And I, I remember um, throughout my entire time attending school from elementary school to high school, all my bus drivers are, you know, like you said, the first people you see when you go on the bus and go to school. So it really is a pleasure to have such amazing bus drivers that really care for us. Yeah. And, and you know, there's a lot that goes into being a bus driver outside of just being a friendly face. There's a lot of training that has to be done. Um, you know, we, we provide all of our training in-house. So we do all of our own training for our bus drivers. Um, from the time a, a bus driver really comes in through our front door that wants to apply for a position to the time I put them behind the wheel and safely transporting our students in UCS, it's about five or six weeks. And there's quite an extensive amount of training that goes on. And then there's licensing and testing through the state to you know, the, the Department of Transportation through the state. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot involved. There's a lot of dedication in that job that people, I don't think, necessarily realize every day. Right. Of course. Is there maybe a recent change that was made to our UCS transportation system? And if so, could you talk about that revised change that's been made and why it's maybe better? I would say probably the, the greatest change that we've seen in years in transportation in general, not just in UCS, but in mm -hmm. general across the country, is the addition of cameras to buses. Cameras have really been able to provide a layer of security for our students, mm -hmm. um, a layer of security for our staff members that are driving our buses. It just helps us when there's a, a, an issue on the bus or if there's an issue maybe with a fender bender with a bus. Mm -hmm. Those buses are very large. Those mm -hmm. fender benders do happen. The cameras can often provide assistance on exactly how that happens and provide some guidance on how we want to proceed with what, you know, what remedies we need to make sure to rectify exactly. that situation. Of course. And let's say, you know, I, since you mentioned there's cameras and buses, so how, if a situation were to arise, if something were to caught, how is that situation dealt with um, now that the addition of the cameras has been put in place? That's a great question because that kind of marries my two positions together. Let's say there's a situation on a bus between two students. The principal is generally the first person to be alerted to that situation from the bus driver. Mm -hmm. The principal then will call me. I have access to all of those cameras being the director of security as well. Right. I have access to those cameras. I go back, I review the footage. I may send a piece of that footage to the principal to say, hey, this is actually what happened. This is you know, what we see on our cameras. And then the principal is able to deal with the situation right then and there. That's great. It's really great to know that uh, UCS really values our safety and protection. So that's I've always said that's my number one priority is the safety right. of our students. And now it's the safety of our students and our staff in the of district course. as well. I mean, I came out of being a teacher and then I was a principal in the district and now I'm a director. And I've always said to my students, my number one role is to keep you safe. And now as the director, I say to not only our students, but also to our staff and our community, my number one role is still to keep all of you safe. So 
course. Lastly, is there a lot of communication that goes into your position or is it more individual based in the sense that everyone's doing their own job, their own tasks, or is it a big teamwork? Well, as in every other realm, it takes teamwork to make the dream work, right? So there is a tremendous amount of communication because uh, I'll give you an example. If a, if a bus is broken down, the driver has to communicate with our mechanics. Our mechanics have to communicate with our dispatch. Our dispatch then communicates with me and our transportation supervisors. We have to shift bus numbers. So then our supervisors have to call the schools and say, hey, bus 38 is bus 64 today. So anytime even, you know, small minor changes, Mm -hmm. there's a ripple effect throughout the district. So we have to make those changes immediately and get that communicated out as fast as possible. There's also been times when we've had you know, construction going on in the the general area, or there's an accident. Just last week, I was working with one of our local law enforcement agencies. Mm -hmm. We had a traffic light out at Hall Road in Shaner, two major crossroads in our our district. It was going to back traffic up tremendously. So they let me know early enough in the day, I could let our dispatch know fast enough. They could let our drivers know. Drivers could reroute their routes for the day and try to avoid that area and still get our students home on time. Getting our students home on time is important. A lot of our students have extracurricular activities going on after school. So it's really important for us to try to maintain some time frames of getting our students picked up and dropped off every day. Wonderful. With that, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience? You know what? I I just the number one thing I I want to remind all of our listeners and our viewers today is that the safety of our buses, please make sure that when you see those red flashers on and you see that red arm stop sign out that you stop. You may have students, young and old, crossing in front of our buses that you may not see and trying to go around one of our buses because you might be in a little bit of a hurry could create some serious problems for everybody involved. So take those extra two minutes, stop for our bus, let our students unload safely and get home safely before before you get on to your next destination. Right. Thank you so much for that wonderful piece of advice. Okay, well, Mr. Laporte, thank you so much for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure to be able to speak with you. Uh, Christine, thank you very much for having me today, and I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you so much. And thank you, of course, to all our listeners and viewers who are listening to UCS Academy. It was an absolute pleasure, and I hope you guys can tune in with us on our next episode. Thank you, and I'm Christine Maglethet. UCS Pod Academy is a resource created by Utica Community Schools, Michigan's second largest school district located in Macomb County. Thank you for listening. UCS Pod Academy is always available at uticak12.org slash podcademy. Through this website, you'll be able to listen to additional episodes and access any resources and show notes featured in this episode. If you have episode recommendations, we invite you to send them via email to ucs at uticak12.org.